In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the 11 different psychological masks we wear and how that robs us of happiness, love and peace. And we're starting right now. Welcome to this episode of Odas to Lead. I am Dyer Samuel, and in this episode, I'm going to be walking you through the 11 different masks we wear that rob us of peace, happiness, and true love. What I'm going to be walking you through is based off of a video that I did initially. You will find a link to that in the description or you'll find it in the card above. But let's talk about the 11 different masks we wear, 11 psychological masks that block true happiness, peace, and love. Rarely does a person emerge from childhood completely without any emotional neglect or hurt of any sort. Most of us, while we were in our childhood, we learned to protect ourselves with defense mechanisms and personality traits that we actually adopted in order to ensure our safety in the world. By adopting certain behavioral patterns, we unconsciously or sometimes consciously seek out security, certainty, and stability. We wear different kinds of masks to keep us from getting too hot. And in doing so, we shut ourselves off from authentic relationships and stay stuck in the scars of our childhood wounds. By identifying the different masks that you wear part-time, you'll be able to heal, you'll be able to come to a place where your inner self and your outer self, your internal self and your external self can come to a place of alignment, to a place where they come together and agree together. And that's what I'm going to be walking you through in the 11 different marks that I'm going to be sharing with you right now. So as we go on, I want you to ask yourself, which mask do you wear? People wear psychological masks all of the time. Even if you wear one based on the circumstances, based on the environment you find yourself in. And there are 11 of them, as I mentioned earlier on. Number one is the cool guy. Are you the type of person who by all outward appearances seem to have mastered whatever it takes to stay cool, calm and collected in all situations, even in the face of chaos and conflict? The cool guy Max type possesses the composure of a righteous monk. However, beneath the surface, one of two things happens. His bottled up emotions either result in a nervous breakdown or he periodically releases his emotional valve when no one is around, snapping at others who are subordinate to him. He yells and lambasts the waiter for forgetting his coffee or fires off a nasty message, a nasty email to his assistant for a small error. Number two is the people pleaser. The people pleaser will go to any length to win the approval of those around her because her sense of identity is largely based on the assessment of others. Her values often fluctuate depending on the input of the day because she looks to outside sources in order to validate who she is. This mask type solicits the advice of friends, doctors, experts, co-workers, and mentors because she lacks a strong personal foundation. You may find yourself easily influenced by others and decisions are especially difficult for you to make because you want to please everyone involved. Number three is the bully. Now, almost every environment in which we work and play is like a secondary school yard with its own peculiar shares of bullies. The bully's assertion of control can be sought to, a gentle manipulation to make you see something their way, or can be aggressive, even physical. While bullies appear to be confident in their forceful delivery of opinions and order, they are internally insecure. They so badly want to be respected that they will break the rules of appropriate conduct to get that feeling of esteem. Self-doubt drives their hostile behavior and obsessive need to feel right that comes at the expense of other people's rights and feelings. Number four, the humorist. Humor is a brilliant defense mechanism. I use it myself. The humorist tells a joke in order to avoid sincere discussions to keep conversations from getting too real or too deep. That said, it can and does prevent intimacy. Sarcasm especially tends to be rooted in pain and it's not without consequences. Now, do you find yourself that you are uncomfortable with conflict and can tell a joke to get out of confrontation? What you may not know is that comedy serves as a protective shield as such. You don't allow anyone into your life, even if you allow them, sometimes you are 
internally lonely. Number five is the martyr. Most of us know a martyr, someone who willingly suffers death or similar occurrences sometimes as a boast that they single-handedly saved the world with their selfless actions. Now, talking about masks, while martyrs can bring families together with compassion, the exaggeration of their sacrifices oftentimes drives loved ones away. The drama with which they do good serves as a protective shield from the very people who they are helping. The martyr secures her place in the world by believing her role is critical, all the while making everyone around her uncomfortable. Number six, the self basher. Similar to the martyr, the self basher suffers from a chronic case of unworthiness and insecurity. And so the self basher projects a negative view of herself to others, perhaps unconsciously. Do you believe that you can insulate yourself from hurt by hurting yourself first? As a self basher, you berate and insult yourself as a protective measure against any potential negative remark that may come your way. Self-disapproval becomes a defense mechanism with which you avoid any risk of intimacy. So as I go on right now, I want you to also look at the six that I've mentioned so far. Which of these do you wear? And I want you to understand that we weren't born with masks. We put them on at a certain point in our journeys. And we can also take them off. Though it's difficult to admit, we all have flaws and we may find it difficult to actually accommodate our insecurities. So masking up becomes how we choose to protect ourselves, how we choose to help ourselves in the world and sometimes it doesn't actually help any better than not masking up. So let's continue. Number seven, the control freak. The control freak uses other control and power to achieve a sense of security by making sure everything is in its proper place, everyone is doing what they are told to do at the right time, his fear of the unknown, of ambiguity, of failure, of uncertainty is reduced. If he ever finds that people deviate from the plan, it can become unleashed. As a mother hen, the control freak won't let anyone out of her sight and assumes responsibility for all those around her, even when they don't want to be cared for. Number 8. The introvert. Haha, <laughs> they seem to describe me. But here's the thing. The timid person or introvert is deathly afraid of failure and rejection. He would much rather enjoy the pangs of loneliness than risk not being liked or disapproved by others. Call him a perfectionist if you want to. You need to understand that he is so afraid of making a mistake that he refuses to challenge himself and can settle for anything life gives him. He blushes easily, is embarrassed easily, and doesn't talk much for fear of saying the wrong thing. Number 9. The Overachiever some people unconsciously pursue perfectionism as a defense against becoming irrelevant, against going into extinction. Their belief is that if everything is done right, then their world can never fall apart. While the accolades and praise associated with being a perfectionist may provide some temporary relief, the perfectionist is always at the mercy of something going wrong and therefore lives in a constant state of anxiety. His stubbornness, obsessiveness, and lack of trust creates a barrier between him and those he loves. Number 10. The Intellectual Do you find yourself on a constant pursuit of new knowledge, new learnings, wanting to attend the next training, acquire certificates, or buy the next program? Well, while that is very good because we all need to constantly grow, let me ask you, do you use that as a mask in order to feel good? I mean, rather than appear ignorant, unknown, and unable to answer questions when asked, or maybe you've once been laughed at so you now embark on a knowledge adventure in order to protect yourself from experiencing similar humiliating scenes or scenarios again. That is how to understand the intellectual mask. Number 11, which is the last one, the social butterfly. Oftentimes, the social butterfly is referred to as the life of the party and he or she could be inherently lonely. He compensates for feelings of insecurity with his gift of gab and small talk and ability to talk people into what he wants them to do. He has many acquaintances but few, if any, real friends. Although his calendar is packed full of social events, his life could lack meaning. 
it keeps his conversation superficial because deeper dialogues may expose his anxiety or shred his confident persona. So here's the question again, which mask do you wear? As I mentioned earlier, we were not born with masks. We at one point put them on and we can also take them off. And in order to live an authentic life, you need to be able to take off the mask and actually live as your internal self actually sees itself. Now, here's what comedian Fanny Bryce actually explained about masks. She said, let the world know you as you are, not as you think you should be. Because sooner or later, if you are posing, you will forget the pose and then where are you? See, the greatest battle we face as humans is the battle to protect ourself, our true self from the self that the world wants us to be. Masks make shallow what God has intended, what God has designed to be deep. Everything in our lives changes when we choose to hide behind our masks. And everything takes a different turn when we decide to uncover the mask and become true and authentic to ourselves. I am Dyer Samuel and this is Audacity to Lead where I give you the courage and the necessary insights to lead your life and business in the direction that matters to you. Now, if this has been interesting to you, if this has been an exciting discovery for you, I would like to hear from you. Leave a comment down below this video and tell me which of the masks that you wear. And more importantly, if you find yourself battling with anything and would like to talk about it, you can actually send me an email. You can use the email going on the screen right now. You can send me an email and we'll talk about it. Now over to you. Have you subscribed to this channel yet? Please go ahead and subscribe so that you can receive more videos like this. And I'm going to see you in the next video.